Welcome to Healthy Talks with your health care lady, Letitia Jackson, where we here to encourage individuals, bridges the gap together with entrepreneurs, and uh, just coming together and sharing healthy talks by being spiritual, physical, mental, emotional, and financial wealthy. And so we have Mr. John Jones here. I'm so excited. Um, for him to be a part of this episode. Uh, Mr. John, I met him, I believe, in Tupelo Career Fair Day uh, a couple of months back. Career Fair. Yes. Career Fair, yes, sir. And so, <laughs> and, and since then, we've come acquainted uh, since then. And so, we just got some great information here that we want to share with you. So, if you have seniors that's in your family that's graduated from high school, Please like and share this post because we got some information that you do not want to miss, okay? Um, also, too, you can find us on Healthy Talks on a Facebook page with My Health Care Lady. Find us on Instagram. Also, you can find us uh, on Spotify as well. So if you would, please go ahead and like and share this information. You do not want to miss it, okay? I want to say Happy Easter to all. I had a great day on today. I hope you did as well, Mr. Jones. You have a great day on today. I found everything except the eggs. <laughs> so I found Christ a long time. Amen. Yes. Praise <laughs> the Lord for that, y'all. So, again, uh, I hope the children had a beautiful time today. Um, here it rained, so we couldn't do the Easter egg hunt, but we still had a great time in the Lord on today. And so, uh, how about us ending today on a special note with my good friend, Mr. John Jones. So I'm not going to prolong the time. I'm going to go ahead and ask Mr. Jones to introduce yourself. Tell our listeners and viewers more about you. Oh, okay. Thank you, Ms. Jackson. <laughs> and also, I would like to thank you for this opportunity to allow me to come on this platform. Yes, sir. And uh, talk to the, your listeners and friends out there. Uh, I'm... John Jones, as you know, Ms. Jackson stated, and I'm uh, born and reared in Jones County, Laurel, Mississippi. Uh, came from a family of 16 children. Wow. <laughs> 13 boys and three girls. That's wow. what it was. And uh, my parents were farmers. Okay. Uh, my father died when I was eight years old, and my mother kept the farm. Wow. And uh, she kept the farm, and she did not work. She was a full-time farmer. And she raised us and uh, sent five of us to all Foreign State University. Uh, after graduating from my high school, that's where I went and obtained my BS degree in agricultural education at all Corn. And after I received my degree, I was offered a job with the uh, United States Department of Agricultural. Uh, back then, the agency was the Soil Conservation Service, but now it's the uh, Natural Resources Conservation Service. And, uh, I started out right across the river, river from Cincinnati, uh, in Covington, Kentucky, and this little country boy from Mississippi going right across the river from Cincinnati. I, I don't know how to, <laughs> didn't know how to act. <laughs> but uh, I, I went there and I said, well, I'll go and stay two or three years and then I'll come back to Mississippi. Mm -hmm. Then uh, in 2011, we moved back to Mississippi 40 years later. Wow. So, wow. That was our. Uh, had a tremendous career, uh, 37 years with USDA age, uh, there in Kentucky. I retired out of Lexington, Kentucky. When I retired, I was an assistant state conservationist, so uh, God bless me. I was able to ride through the ranks, and there was only one person over me when I retired. Wow. And, uh, in 1973, I was promoted to the position of uh, county supervisor, so... In 1973, I became the first black supervisor for the federal government, wow. USDA in Kentucky. So uh, I've been fortunate and blessed, and uh, through the grace and good law of my family, friends, and support, uh, I'm, I'm blessed. I'm married, we'll be married 48 years coming up in August, have uh, two beautiful children. Uh, both of them, we sent back down to Alcorn State University okay. <laughs> for their education, <laughs> and uh, after my son had been down for about a year, he called back and said, hey, mom and dad left me and she all are not coming back to Kentucky. So <laughs> that's why we're in uh, Mississippi now, and we have one granddaughter. Uh, she's at uh, Mississippi Gulf Coast okay. Community College, plays softball, and she's uh, having a tremendous experience there. Wow. So just hearing just this your, your life all in less than two minutes, <laughs> there is 
a lot of history and a lot of things you just said on today. So I want to go back to first. You said you had 16 siblings total or 15 plus you, you're 16. Yes. How was that? How was life like back then? I can't imagine. Uh, well, back then, uh, to be honest with you, it was it was beautiful. Okay. Uh, uh, you know, family. I think when you come from a large family, it teaches you a perspective of sharing, mm -hmm. of giving, making sacrifice, cooperation, working together. Uh, we pitched in and uh, things got done. Now, not all 16 were in this house at the same time. Okay, okay. Some of the brothers uh, were older, so they had gone on. Okay. In the, in the military, uh, along those lines. And uh, let's say this also, now my mother was a mother of eight children. Okay. My father, first wife, died. Okay. He had eight children by his first wife. Then he married my mother. He had eight children by her. Wow. So, uh, but we, you know, on a farm, there's always something to do. There, there's always <laughs> crops. That, you know, I pick cotton. I cut hay. I uh, fed hogs. And, uh, but, you know, we grew our own food. Okay. We grew our own food. We, we, we had, uh, like I said, chicken. Uh, own eggs, uh, we made our own, own meal, mm. so we were, you know, we were, we were independent. We were independent. And, and very organic. <laughs> nowadays, yeah, exactly. you, nowadays, the food nowadays is everything is mixed with so many different types of chemicals. So, yeah. so what, so what made you attend Alcorn State? I see mom, she sent five of you to Alcorn State University. Yeah. Why Alcorn State University? Well, this is back in the 60s. Mm -hmm. And things were still segregated to a certain extent. Of course, Meredith had integrated Ole Miss in 1962. But my first brother that went, he went to Alcorn in 1960, and actually he is still there. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> okay. He, he worked there, he got a job there, and uh, actually when he retired, he still, he just lived right off the, right off the campus. And uh, although my mother went through the 10th grade, she didn't have a high school education, uh, neither did my father, neither one of them graduated from high school, but they were very strong in education. Uh, my mother, I remember 1960, about a set of world book encyclopedias. I remember those. Yeah, yes, <laughs> yes. And actually, we were the uh, only family pretty much in the community that had a set. So oh, kids wow. from the community would come in and uh, use our books to help you know, do their homework. So, uh, but when my first brother went, he went and uh, he asked his mom, say, hey, mom, if I can go to Alcorn, I'll help any of them that wants to come along. And after my father died in 1958, uh, some of the older people in the community was telling her he doesn't need to go to college. He needs to stay here and help you with the farm. And uh, he's the oldest one. He needs to stay here and help you. And I, and I remember, Remember my mom saying, well, they're sending their children to Tuskegee and to Tougaloo mm -hmm. and to Jackson State. I want to send my son to Alcorn. Okay. And by her having that faith and belief in us, uh, we could not let her down. We could not let her down because she made tremendous sacrifices and mm -hmm. you know, for us. And you know, not only that, you know, going to college in the 60s, uh, people went to Alcorn and Russ and Tougaloo and Jackson State with meager resources. Mm -hmm. So their children went out there, went to those places to make sure that they made their parents, you know, feel good. Wow. You know, I was thinking about it. So I attended, of course, Ole Miss and Mississippi State. And okay. unfortunately, mm -hmm. I didn't know enough about HBCU college. I didn't know, I didn't know much about it. And now as I got older, I'm learning just different things that I didn't know then. So I'm glad you're here today to tell everybody about these type of colleges and what's available to them. Mm -hmm. So, um... So Alcorn is the historical land grant college in the U.S., the first one, am I right? Uh, yes, it's the oldest historical okay. black land grant college okay. in, in, in America, actually in the world. Wow. Uh, wow. It was established, Alcorn was established in 1871. Mm -hmm. uh, it was, it was, there was a college already there, Oakland College, and when the war, the Civil War broke out, Oakland College was a uh, was a Presbyterian for white for white boys, so mm -hmm. they all left the fight in the war. So after the war was over with, they did not open the college back up. So at that time, uh, there was Governor James Alcorn, which Alcorn County is named after. Mm -hmm. He bought that property to start educating newly freed slaves. Now, Ole Miss, the University of Mississippi, also was established eighteen forty eight. Mm -hmm. 
Abraham Lincoln established what he called the 1862 Land Grant Program in 1862. So the federal government said, we would give you money, we would give you land to establish curriculum for poor people. Mm -hmm. Because Ole Miss was established, and that's where your large plantation owners were sending their children. But, you know, everyone white at that time wasn't rich, they didn't own plantation also. So the poor whites did not have a place to go because they could not afford to go to Ole Miss. But also the poor blacks had a place to go mm -hmm. because in 1871, all form was established to start educating blacks. Mississippi State, which is the land grant college now at Starkville, it was established in 1878. So I was about seven years older than Mississippi State. Wow. So in order to wow. get the federal dollars, they designated Alcorn as a land grant college. Now, where the 1890 come in is that they passed a second law mm -hmm. in 1890 to bring in the other historical black college to make them land grant. So that's where your Tuskegee's, your Florida a and your Tennessee State, uh, your North Carolina a and all of those. Right now, there are about 19 1890 land grant college and universities wow. throughout the nation. Everything. Wow. Pretty good stuff, y'all. Historic you know, stuff. Well, it is. You, yeah, you, you know your history pretty good. I don't got my numbers in years. I don't, I don't mix up. But. <laughs> so, um, but also, too, I know we want to talk about what we got going on this Saturday. This Saturday. April 23rd is it, yes. the Race for Scholars uh, 5K. You want to talk more about that and, and what that means? Uh, definitely, definitely. I, the 5K, I signed up to walk it. I'm not going to run it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm going to walk. I'm signed up for it. And I would like for anyone out there that's interested, you need to go to runsignup.com runsignup.com to register to participate in this race and we need I'm, I'm, I'm coming to you today to ask you we need your support uh, we do not have the numbers that we were anticipating okay uh, we are low we, we're woefully low okay okay <laughs> okay and I got a call last week from the uh, race director the organizer the guy that's putting up the timing equipment and everything and he called and wanted to know if we wanted to cancel or postpone it and I told him no, although the numbers are low, right? although they're not where we expected them to be. But I have faith. I have faith. I have a belief that it's going to work out. It's going to work out because not only are we going to have this 5K race, the race scholarship fund for students from the Northeast Mississippi to go to Alcorn, but we have a health and wellness fair that's going to be going on at the same time. The health okay. and wellness fair is going to start around 9 30, 10 o'clock. Okay. It's going to go to 2 o'clock. We're going to have uh, uh, medical people there doing tests, uh, taking evaluation. Okay. Uh, the blood drive is going to be there. We're going to have a blood drive. So, although we may come low in numbers for the race, we still want to afford this opportunity to our people because if you know when, when COVID hit, our community was impacted more mm -hmm. so than other communities because of some of those historical problems that we have. And a lot of times people walking around don't even know they have high blood pressure. That's so true. This is going to be a you know, two-fold you know, two purpose. Okay. So I'm reading here the 5K. You can walk, you can run, and even roll. Well, that's true. <laughs> so if you're in a wheelchair, you still can um, participate, right? Definitely. Okay, definitely. and uh, would there be, I uh, see cash prize for the top three finishers? Are top three finishers, going? yes. Okay. They, they, they will receive uh, uh, cash prizes. And then also we have medals that will go to a uh, different age group. We have broken up by age. Okay. So people, I'm 73, so I'm going to be in the 73 your old category, so <laughs> okay. I'm not going to be running. I'm not going to be competing with someone 35. <laughs> Everything, but Miss Jackson, one of the reasons we want to raise these funds mm -hmm. is to again make scholarship monies available for students in Northeast Mississippi because a lot of them are coming out of household where they're the first one to go to college, mm -hmm. and ideally, a lot of people are looking at. ACTs 24, 25, and 26. Our grade point average is 3.7, 3.5, 4.0. And that's great and fine, you know, uh, you know God bless them. 
But there are some students that may have a 2.5 mm -hmm. and may have made 16 on ACT because of the environment that they are coming out of. So our minimum requirements is a 2.5 grade point average. And we don't worry about the ACT because wow. we know that testing is not a determinant of what you will become. We want them to get into the university. Right. And we want them to be surrounded by positive instructor, positive classmate, where they can walk and see students that look like them. And hopefully this will inspire them to go on because, you know, I don't know what my GPA was when I <laughs> 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 But through that, I was able to take my degree mm -hmm. and I was able to go all the way up to the top in my profession. Wow. And so we want that. And also, uh, some of these scholarship funds we use when students from here, all forms about 300 miles from Tupelo. Mm -hmm. So sometimes there may be a death in the family and the students have to come before Christmas or Thanksgiving. So we try to assist them and get them back and forth up here. So we give them a little stipend mm -hmm. every now and then just to help, you know, just to help out because we feel that once you go to Alcorn, you're, you're, you're a family. And we say, you know, Alcorn is, a, is an institution of a, of a family. I know I've visited Alcorn State twice. Twice. Yeah, okay. twice. I'm for, I mean, I was there working, you know, but uh, it, was, it was a drive. But when I got there, it was very inviting, you know, just seeing the students of, of us, you know, yeah. being there, being educated, being motivated, you know. It, so it was yeah. a real, real good environment. Even the campus was beautiful. So, yeah. so Alcorn State University, so if you have someone who's in, in high school, not sure where they want to go, or if their GPA might not be the, the at least 2.5, .5. this is an option that they can go to ACT is not a big option, right, no, to have no. to attend. And see, not now, for scholarship. not for the scholarship. Now, I wish I would have known this for some, maybe some of my kids, right? <laughs> you know, who was uh, considering college, you know. And uh, so that's good information out there. So listen, parents, your child do have somewhere to go. And they are in good hands. They can learn about the history while they're there. And also to be able to get an education as well. So I have a question. Yes, ma'am. How can uh, people participate in the 5K? How can they donate? If they don't want to do part of the 5K run, what else can they do to give towards the scholarships? Okay. Uh, great question. Appreciate mm -hmm. that because we are, again, we're, we haven't met our goal in the numbers. Mm -hmm. Nor have we set, met our goals for the scholarship. We had a goal for $22,000 for, okay. for, for this particular event. And uh, if we can achieve that. Mm -hmm. If people would, you know, we're not saying... We just say give. Right. You know, we just say give because we feel if you get $5 on God, will multiply that. In, in, in a certain and he will. He will, definitely. But if you just want to give, write a check out, uh, uh, just drop it by Miss Jackson's office. <laughs> <laughs> just drop it by her office tomorrow. Uh, yes, uh, you can actually go on this website, runsignup.com. Okay. And there's a page there where you can donate. Okay. Actually, you can, uh, you can donate in people. Are donating and they're donating in clip of 50, 75 all. Okay. So we are appreciative. We are very appreciative of that. Okay. And that's runsignup.com. R U N S I G N U P dot com. So you can go there, you can donate all that you wish and will, and it's going to a great cause. So we always want to make sure that we can support our children uh, for a good cause. This is a great way you can give back. It doesn't matter if you got $5 or $100 to give back. Just Gill is going to a great cause. Definitely. All right. Yeah. And so, um, I know also, too, you also have some other things going on for yourself. Uh, well, yeah. <laughs> 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 we, we are, uh, we are, uh, my family and I, yes. uh, my brothers, we started a, uh, an LLC back okay. about 10 years ago, okay. named the liability company. And the reason we started this company was because of, uh, our mother had passed. Okay. Our mother passed, she was 101 when she passed. Wow. Anyway. <clears throat> but we had property that, you know, throughout the African-American community, mm -hmm. a lot of times parents don't have a will mm -hmm. and say how the property is going to be disposed of. So when you do that, it's called heirs' property. So you have... 20 and 30 people owning the property. Mm. 
fortunately, we were able to know where all our nieces and nephews were and stuff. So we were able to you know, contact them and say, hey, we're ready to sell up the property. What do you all want to do? You want to keep your part? Uh, you want to sell your part? So we started an LLC and with our wives and we said to those family members, if you want to sell yours, because we have family members in Chicago and California that say, hey, we're not coming back. Mm -hmm. But they still own the property. So we said, if you want to sell your property, sell it to the LLC. So with the LLC, you don't own acres, you own shares. Okay. You own shares. So we are able to, we were able to get that, we were able to get the property. Uh, well, one brother did not, you know, decide not to come into the LLC, mm -hmm. but however, family member had a choice to sell to the LLC or to sell to him, and it worked out. You know, there's no, you know, no, no feelings. I mean, it, it's you know, people have their choices; they make their own decisions. Okay. And so, but with the LLC, it's uh, it's called Jen Hour. Okay. Jen Hour. Uh, it's named my mother, my mother was named Geneva. My father was named Ira. Okay. So that's what the name Jen Ira sixteen. Okay. Because of the sixteen, 16 children. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> because of sixteen children. So I uh, and, and of course uh, the brothers that you know we all had we in position of leadership mm -hmm. uh, without you know without a profession and we started it. Uh, we provide training and workforce development, community development, uh, civil rights, uh, ethics. So we did that, and the last year or so, we were able to work with USDA okay. because the uh, four was made in an mm -hmm. So we were able to uh, work with USDA, and we were able to receive a grant from them okay. to go out and work in 14 counties, seven counties in North Mississippi, seven counties in South Mississippi, to inform and educate young African American about careers and opportunities in an Okay. Now, oftentimes when we talk to students or young people about agriculture, a lot of time they have this misconception that it's hard work. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, they look back to slavery, which that was part of the history. That was part of the history. But now it doesn't take a, it doesn't take a human hand to go into a cotton field. Mm -hmm. uh, the dynamics of it is agriculture is so much technology now, so much science, you know, engineering involved. But our children are not aware of that. So we're going out trying to work with these students, these children, to just to expose them to the different careers in agriculture. One of the things we're finding out is that Purdue University did a study, and each year there's over 60,000 jobs that goes unfilled in the wow. agriculture arena. Wow. So there are jobs out there, there are good paying jobs. And one of the things I want to, also we were talking about the North Mississippi mm -hmm. uh, scholarship, but with all the corn being an 1890 land grant institution, the United States Department of Agriculture offers a full four-year scholarship to a student to attend all corn to major in agriculture. Wow. And the beauty of that, Mr. Jackson, is when he or she graduates from Calhoun County High School, mm -hmm. Uh, Chickasaw County High School, uh, Tupelo High School, mm -hmm. when they get their diploma in May, they become a federal employee at that time. Wow. So, but it does have requirements of ACT. Okay. <laughs> very important. Yeah. Uh, you must have a 21 ACT mm -hmm. and a 3.0 grade point average. But it will give you a full four year scholarship, it will give a student a computer. Uh, when they graduate, like I said, from high school, they'll start working for USDA mm -hmm. during the summer. So they will have a summer out. They don't have to worry about working at Chick-fil-A or Chili's or whatever. They start working with USDA at that time, getting quality training in the field which they're going to major in. So uh, <clears throat> after four years, their work history, you know, their attitude and stuff like this mm -hmm. is fine and good they can transition over into a full-time employee. The beauty about that is when they come out of college at 21, 22, or 23, they already have four years towards their retirement. Wow. Towards their retirement. So we are trying to inform and educate people, uh, our young people and parents of this opportunity. Also, uh, make them aware that 
you know, all corners, School of Agriculture and Applied Sciences have programs there to attract young people, African American, mm -hmm. into those professions, <coughs> into the majors, and uh, so we want to have a pipeline for them because what USDA is finding out is that you know, I've been retired sixteen years. But they're finding out that a lot of the African American employees that they hired, mm -hmm. now they are retirement age. So they don't have anyone in the pipeline. So now they're trying to back you know, backfill the pipeline. But agriculture is highly, highly scientific. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, if you a biology major, that's agriculture. You know, if you are a want to be a pilot, that's arrow. A pilot? A pilot, yeah. No. You mean yeah. like a flight of planes? Is it for flight crop dusters yeah. or? Crop dusters. Okay, yes. okay. Crop dusters. Okay. But also, we talk about Easter. Mm -hmm. So, transporting arrow foam to good. Mm. Arrow culture is in the mercantile with mar maritime with shipping because the grain that farmers and the wheat that they have a new storage building, mm -hmm. big civil storage building that you see throughout, right. that's grain. Agriculture is somewhat like the stock exchange because these farmers go out and say, I want to sell my grain in October. And they say, we're going to give you a $5 a bushel for it. And you can say, okay, I have these facilities. I'm going to be able to store it. So it's like the stock market, sell it at the futures market. So agricultural major working on the Chicago Board of Trade, similar to Wall Street. Wow. And they buying things. But from the standpoint of shipping, the strain has to be shipped from China, has to be shipped to Russia, has to be shipped to North Korea. Because they buy grain. Although we see on television, we, <laughs> people talk about we're at war. Uh -huh. <laughs> but American farmers feed the world. Wow. Feed the world. And one of the agencies, the agencies that I work for, that I retired from the Natural Resources and Conservation Service, their responsibility is making sure that the land is crop, but it's left in a productive state. And that agency is all in all 50 states. And I'm proud to say that the man that's over it for the entire nation, mm -hmm. with Puerto Rico, the Virgin Island, American Pacific Islands, is an alternate graduate from all of wow. them. Speaking of graduates, who, who else uh, actually uh, asked him to spend on my foreign graduated there? Uh, John Jones. <laughs> <laughs> John Jones. <laughs> uh, now, we have some proud people that, mm -hmm. uh, that attended Alcorn. A lot of people are not aware that uh, Ada Taylor, mm -hmm. the writer of Roots, attended Alcorn. Uh, Meg Edwards, the slain civil rights leader, right. attended Alcorn. So did Charles, his brother, the first black mayor since Reconstruction. Uh, Mary Lee Edwards, his wife, attended Alcorn. Uh, if you watch the movie The Green Mile, mm -hmm. Michael Clark Duncan, John Coffey attended all corn. And, and in 2000, I think 2005, 2006, we had a Miss Mississippi that attended all corn. Taylor Morgan from over in Taylor, Mississippi, okay. down in uh, Lafayette County. Uh, Steve McNair, quarterback, came in third in the Heisman Trophy winner. Actually, he should have won the Heisman that year, but, uh, you know, <laughs> I, I, I won't go any farther on that one. <laughs> Uh, Donald Driver, who played football for the Green Bay Packers. Okay. The Green Bay Packers, a famed organization where Donald Driver caught more passes than any receiver in the history of the Green Bay Packers attended, attended all for him. Okay. So uh, we, we, we have a rich, you know, we have a hit, rich history. The first person to win a gold medal from a state supported school in Mississippi was Midrather Netter, who won a gold medal in 1968 in the Mexico City Olympics. So a lot, a lot of history there. I want to uh, get this out to you again. The 5K Race for Scholars. So if you want to donate, go to runsignup.com. And we want to thank Mr. John Jones for being a part of this here. Um, so if you have any questions, please let us know uh, about the 5K Run Race. How can you give? Or more about the uh, 1890 scholarship. From what I hear is that agriculture is not what I perceive what it was either. So I, I must say I was dumbfounded as well. I think about just farming, <laughs> you know, but I hear that you can uh, be a, a biologist there. You can be an engineer there. Chemist. Chemist there. So it's so much uh, we can do. Um, so uh, please like and share if you would, please. 
Uh, you got any comments? Um, you want us to answer any questions? Um, chat, do you have anything? I don't have any questions yet. Okay, not any questions yet. Okay. All right. So, um, is there anything else you want to um, tell the listener viewers that we did not discuss? Uh, no, I just want to reiterate, we need your help on Saturday. Uh, pray for a nice, bright, sunshine today also, but we need you down, just, just come down and uh, interact. Uh, we're going to have vendors there, uh, merchants. We'll um, be a vendor there. Uh, you will be a vendor. We'll be a vendor. Y'all yeah, heard Jackson Insurance people will be a vendor. <laughs> yes, oh, <yes>. hello. <laughs> Jackson Insurance is a supporter. I have yes. a check. I have a check in my hand. So, yes. Uh, so that that you know, we just want people to come out and enjoy and just reconnect. Okay. Reconnect. Well, I would say this: I would not be through the five k run. I should or walk, but we'll be a supporter there to give just to first support. We always want to support and give back as much as we can. So come out. I see you got blood drive, di uh, diabetes, blood pressure, cholesterol screening, even COVID screening and vaccinations. So it's this a screening that you can get there for your health and wellness. Also, too, you can come walk, you can run, you can even roll. There are prizes they're going to give away, you all. So come out and be a support at the Fair Park in Tupelo, April 23rd from 8 a.m. to 2 o'clock p.m. Again, if you want to um, be a part of the race, if you want to just donate, go to runsignup.com. I will be sure to post that link there uh, on our social media page. And so... Um, any more, any questions or comment? I don't want to miss anybody before we um, end our live. So um, the county school, what what seven counties are you in? You mentioned that. Uh, two, let's see. <laughs> <laughs> in North Mississippi, in Calhoun, Chickasaw, Lee, uh, Lyons, Clay. Not to be in Monroe. In Monroe. I think it's okay. I think it's seven. All right. So if you are in any one of those counties who got is three point and need a full ride to go to a, a college, a great college at that, I would say reach out so we can direct you to the right direction to do so. Also, too, I heard him say they will be employed right out of high school, right? High school. Yes. Become right. a, a federal employee right out of high school. Federal employee. And even if you don't get the scholarship right okay. out of high school, you can apply for it in your sophomore and junior okay. year. Even if you don't get the scholarship, uh, USDA is still looking for, not only USDA, but the federal government is still looking for people to come into their workforce. And actually, USDA has a full-time person on the campus of Alcorn okay. to help recruit these students to come into the workforce. So and you said sixty thousand jobs. Sixty thousand jobs. Sixty thousand jobs, you all. And most of these jobs starts out about fifty to five thousand mm. somewhere in that range. Wow! So I'm saying fresh out of college, <laughs> fresh out of college, making about fifty k a year, y'all. That's not a bad deed, you know. So. Again, if you got someone who's in high school, you're ready to graduate, or they're getting close to graduation, look towards um, Alcorn State University and, and seek them out and see the type of opportunity you can get um, just being there. Also, too, we have this great book here. Oh, yes. We didn't get a chance to mention it. <laughs> Against the Great Odds, the History of Alcorn State University. So this here is written by Josephine McCann Posey. So this book here, you may want to purchase to learn more about Alcorn State University. I know I will probably, I'm going to get one so I can learn this more about this the history again. Knowledge is power. And if you don't, if you don't know, then how are you going to help somebody else? Definitely. All right. And Ms. Jackson, I just yes, want I, to say right quick uh -huh. uh, that uh, the Dean of the School of Agriculture and Applied Sciences will be here okay. on Saturday at the race. So if any and you don't have to be in high school. We you know, we, we want to start working with them in the fourth and the fifth grade. So okay, we okay. steer them. Because a lot of times students don't know what courses they start really start needing That's to true. take in high school if they want to do that. So we're going to steer them towards the sciences and the technology class in the seventh and eighth grade okay. to make them better prepared to enter into the workforce and everything. All right. Sounds great. Put your hands together, Mr. John John. Thank you for being on our show today. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for and having me. And remember, you. yes, sir. Remember, you can go like our page, Healthy Talk to My Health Care Lady, on Facebook, also on Instagram. Like and share this information, okay? That's the only way we can get the information out there. Remember, you are my healthy loves, and y'all have a great day.